I'm Natia, Little Mama, Kirkland. Hi, this is Little Mama, aka the voice of the young people. This is Little Mama, aka the voice of the young people, kicking it with y'all. I am C. That's right. And I am the music. <laughs> I am the voice of the young people. Yo, this is Little Mama, aka the voice of the young people. Who made you voice of the young people? Little Mama. Giving yourself nicknames isn't really that cool. <laughs> anyway, and if she thinks she's the voice of the young people, Ugh. she needs to come down off the steps a little bit before she starts walking a whole flight of stairs. This must be what a midlife crisis looks like. No, I'm dressed like little mama right now. <laughs> hey, little mama, you a three star. Oh, I, I, I have to ask you, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> well, what the hell? We love little, we we love love little mama too. We love, we love little mama. That's Maybe. nice. Yeah, we love her. Yeah, yes. we don't like <laughs> uncivil behavior. I didn't see that it. I'm just no. hearing about it. But, but, right. but we're not going to talk about it. No, we were talking oh, about your new record, good. and yes. that's going to come up in just a few minutes. Fantastic. All right, we're going to. Go. Were you angry? Were you angry? Yeah, I was a little angry. Yeah, to be honest, I, but you know. What I'm going to do? I'm gonna fight little mama? <laughs> My family was telling me that they heard an interview on the radio from Jay-Z, and um, he said, what was he supposed to do, beat up little mama? <laughs> and so I was like, wow, that, that meant that he didn't, he didn't really like it. But little mama is dead to me. <laughs> oh, wow. But if I can go up there and see if she's there and slap her around for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. I mean, was, okay. was, That's all we ask is that you slap her around a little yeah. bit. Yes. So when little mama... <laughs> We did American Music she Awards. Rap and dance we had time. to hold her down and almost beat her up, actually. Like, girl. I don't need little mama messing up what I got going on with Kiyomi. My girl gonna whoop her ass. You could feel so beat up on that it's like, damn, who's with me? You know what I'm saying? I feel I feel like I'm by myself. Is it even matter to be here anymore? To be embarrassed? Don't talk, be... don't talk to me like that. Oh, okay. Mama. Don't talk to me like that. Mama. Oh, all right. That was kind of aggressive. I, I know. As you I know. know I, I, I'm, I'm in my past. Yeah, you, you and your zone. Slow the aggression down. Let First of all, don't tell me hold up like that. Okay, you want me to? What you want me to do? Because I thought we was having the conversation. Hey. Don't try to be politically correct for these niggas out no, there. No, no, no. It ain't. Do that. A, it ain't Don't about. Do that. Hold Don't on. Do that. Hold on. I open up to you for real. Oh, all right. Now, people know you for playing yourself, walking up on stage with Jay Z and Alicia Keys. Charlamagne, That's they know you seriously, from. That's cut the this truth. out. Cut this out. Because right now you're like a caricature yourself. But you're the person that's promoting that. Little mama. This is why people don't like you, okay? Honestly and truthfully, you know your career has been popping since your lip gloss has been popping. You consistently either put your foot or your body in your mouth. You're always at the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm going to get a reaction. I'm electric. I'm going to get a reaction out of you. So whether you hate me or love me, you're going to do something. You're going to work around here. <laughs> Heard up. It's little mama. It's little mama. It's little mama. Rapper Little Mama burst onto the scene in 2007 with her certified gold single, Lip Gloss. She managed to snag a few more collaborative hits with T-Pain, Chris Brown, and Avril Lavigne before her career would be tarnished by her teenage media antics. And even though her intentions were never malicious, she was always misunderstood. But the world is not so forgiving, and they would turn their backs on the young starlet, never letting her live down her mistakes. And in today's episode of the Sad Situation series, we will dive deep into each one of Little Mama's infractions and the mindset behind them in the hopes that viewers like you will get more of an understanding of Little Mama as a person and how her intentions were often lost in translation. And I'm just going to throw out a trigger warning ahead of time because the disrespect this woman went through, I'm telling y'all right now. But I am telling you right now. You might have to pause the video, catch a breath, Come back later, do what you gotta do, because she went through it. If there are any other misunderstood artists you'd like to see covered in the Sad Situation series, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. Let's get started. At 17 years old, Natia Kirkland would emerge as the self-proclaimed voice of the young people during the first few years of her career, as she wanted her music to provide an outlet for the youth. Her first single was a viral hit, but wasn't one without its criticism, as she was literally rapping about lip gloss which many hip-hop heads felt was too juvenile to be taken seriously. Like, damn, they rap about anything these days. The second single, G-Slide, was a dance track which was sung to the nursery rhyme, The Wheels on the Bus. And while it was creative, many listeners would flood the comments echoing the sentiments they had about the previous single. Little Mama also began donning baby clothes at award shows as a way to not only connect with the younger audience, but even more so as a stance against the pressures of teenage girls having to dress provocative ahead of their time. It's okay to hold on to your youth. However, this translated to many audiences as borderline tackiness. The message just didn't connect. 
but little mama had more pressing issues to deal with. Her mother, who had appeared in the lip gloss video, had a four year battle with breast cancer and was in her final stages of life at this point. And as the eldest girl out of eight kids, she often bared the mother role for her younger siblings, thus the nickname Lil Mama. And as she rose in fame, her mind was in two places at once. Her mother would pass away on December 15th, 2007. And as painful as one could only imagine this was, Little Mama didn't have proper time to grieve. She had a tour with Chris Brown, she was a judge on a popular dance competition show, America's Best Dance Crew, and was in the midst of recording her debut album, appropriately titled The Voice of the Young People. She had recorded a heap of songs that ranged from dance tracks to more serious topics. Her single, Life, spoke on teenage pregnancy, substance abuse, and life for foster kids. Her song, College, which is my favorite track on the album, was a metaphor for when she would visit her father in prison. The song spoke on the struggles and pressures a father has to make to feed his family, and how prison is the new college for young black youth. A very powerful song indeed. Shake is a song about a man making a pass at a young lady and her rejecting his advances. All in all, it was a solid album. And as promo, she would collaborate with many young stars at the time, like the aforementioned, along with Vanessa Hudgens on the song Amazed, Ashley Tisdale on the song Graffiti Girl, and up-and-coming DJ Khaled on the song One Hit Wonder. She managed to hop on the official remixes of hits by Rihanna and Mary J. Blige as well. Now Little Mama would phone in to various radio stations to talk about her new album following its release in April of 2008, but things would go horribly wrong when one station in particular, V104.7 FM in Phoenix, Arizona, wanted to talk about the show Nip Tuck that used Little Mama's lip gloss song for a steamy lovemaking scene, and Little Mama wasn't here for it. It's so cool. It this, uh, you know, Nip Tuck is my favorite TV show of all time. And earlier uh, this year, they started this phenomenal sex scene with this song. It was fantastic. Lil Mama, what's up? You're on the air, John Jane Rich. Yeah, yeah, I already know John Jay Rich and Carrie was really good. Mm. What's up? How about how about that scene from Nip Tuck? Do you remember that? Did you see it? Um, I didn't see any scenes of that nature. So, um, and I'm not a part of that. I'm actually the voice of the young people. In case you may know, but I already know. I goes in like Pac J. So Arizona was good. <laughs> Lil Mama, you, you were ready to roll. Did you, know, <laughs> did you know that it was on Nip Tuck? Good morning. It's a great morning. Mm -hmm. Did you know that your song was on Nip Tuck? Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Really? No. There's this show. It's called Nip Tuck. It's a phenomenal show. It's about plastic surgeons. And there's a scene where this doctor is with this gorgeous girl. I can't All right, believe... look, we're going to skip over that. And we're going to talk about the album. Voice of the Young People. You mind? No, I don't mind. Yeah, I okay, mind. That's what it is. Now, it was apparent that Little Mama wasn't properly media trained on how to handle when she feels uncomfortable talking about a certain topic. And so she quickly took over the interview the best way she knew how. But being from New York and very blunt, not every culture is accustomed to such a tone. And her approach was taken as disrespect. That's when the station got very unprofessional as a result. And one of their personnel would play subterfuge by joining the call from another number and began insulting Little Mama as if they were a third party in an attempt to end the interview. It's definitely going to be dropping. Life is, is, is a definitely a serious song, and it's definitely time. All right, that's about our time. we got to go ahead and wrap this up. Ah, I love you for that. That's what it is. Thanks for having me. 104.7, you know what it is. Voice of the Young People in stores right now. All right, Lil Bow Wow, wrap it up. We just, we just started here, Lil Mama. We just got on the phone with you a second ago. Uh-huh. But we got to go. Now on to the next city. Wrap it up, please. Well, where do you got to go, Lil Mama? We're just getting ready to talk about the Voice of the Young People. All right, you're going in. You got anything to say? Yeah, well, we were going to talk about Nip Tuck. See, that's what I'm saying. You want to be negative, and you want to talk about things that are... No, we want to wrap it up! Come on, little grandma! Wrap it up! Well, it's Lil Mama, sir. You should know. Yes. Lil, Lil Nana? Who is this right here? J John Jay or Rich? That's just being rude. Well, we're, no. we're here talking to you on the phone. We thought that was your, your publicist wrapping, wrapping us up. Those are your oh, people. That's no good. Time's up, guys. Wrap it up! Oh, I'm just saying... So God bless you. You know, have a great day. You know, to my fans that are listening, oh, make sure I go out and get the album voice from people. And I'll holler. One. All right. Whatever. All right, bye, little mama. Uh, all right, bye, little mama. A little, a little over yeah, that. Peace out. Whatever. What, what the hell was the that? The hell was... It's like she slammed a Red Bull and wanted to fight. <laughs> she is just Yeah, terrible. she thought it was us saying wrap it up. Why would you come... Why would you do that? <laughs> of course it was.
<laughs> no, it-, <laughs> it was us, wasn't it? <laughs> God, that was a disaster. She probably had a really bad upbringing, and it's not her fault. Get her back on. I want to tell her it's not her fault. You want me to? No, no, do you want to talk to her again? I want to tell her to shut up. So yeah. Somebody yeah. needs to definitely. Like, let it go. Let it go. Let's the station then spent the rest of the interview time calling different parties who had set up the interview and would badmouth Little Mama, and even spoke to some of her higher ups to get them to discipline her. And when that didn't work, they spoke of possibly reaching out to Clive Davis, who is the head of her record label, Jive Records, in an attempt for disciplinary action to take place. Various callers would also chime in and speak ill of Little Mama. Them cats had a field day with her because they felt disrespected. But in Little Mama's mind, they were being disrespectful from the jump for talking about steamy R-rated scenes to her music. And while she did have a rough upbringing, it was the spiritual and religious aspect of that upbringing that had her taking offense to those comments. You add a culmination of pride, miscommunication, and egos from both parties, it's a recipe for disaster, with everyone acting in defense. The full two-part audio interview is available on YouTube, and if you feel like being frustrated, go check it out. Ironically, the clips were posted online by Little Mama's arch nemesis, Miss Nana, who we'll get to later in the video. Her album, however, ended up flopping, and she publicly blamed her label, who waited 10 months to release it and barely promoted its new singles. Fast forward to July of 2009, when Little Mama was being interviewed on the recent passing of the King of Pop, Michael Jackson, in which she likened his death to that of Savior Jesus Christ. And not only in music, but in the world, period, because he has touched people. I, um, I was talking to my brother, and I mentioned that this was like um, the passing of Jesus Christ. And I wasn't joking. I was serious because Jesus Christ touched so many people. The story that they gave of this man, he touched so many people and healed people. You know what I mean? And Michael Jackson did the same thing, not only with his music, but with his performance and his personality. And um, it's really sad right now, but... I mean, you, you can also celebrate it, you know, play some music, dance, and have a good, good time. You know what I'm saying? This caused an uproar on many black blog sites like Bossip.com, That Grape Juice, and even Wrap Up themselves. Floods of comments lit into Little Mama, accusing her of blasphemy and claiming her comments as an example of us living in the last days. But nothing up to this point was as controversial for Little Mama as what took place on September 13th, 2009, at the VMA Awards. While Kanye took the most heat for infamously interrupting Taylor Swift's award speech, Little Mama would have her own viral moment of infamy. While Jay-Z and Alicia Keys were performing their mega hit, Empire State of Mind, which is an ode to their state of New York, Little Mama, also being from New York, was enjoying the performance and felt overwhelmed with so much love for where she came from and she couldn't contain her emotions nor her excitement. She would rush to the stage and even attempted to bring Beyonce up there with her. She would take to the stage and pose with both Jay-Z and Alicia in what she felt was solidarity. However, to the general public, it was everything but. So, I, I, I have to ask you, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> well, <laughs> what the hell? Well, I don't, I don't think it's as serious as everybody tried to make it out to be. It actually wasn't at all as negative as they tried to make, make it out to be. When I was sitting in the, um, in the stance, I was very excited and I felt the connection, like being from New York, being in hip hop. I was just like so emotional that You're I just- Feeling it? Yeah, I was really feeling it. I got up there to share that moment and it was just like, I felt like I was being embraced at the time. You know, Jay-Z was bouncing back and I'm feeling like this whole moment is happening, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not planning it to be a moment. It just happened. And, didn't he um, tap your leg though, like get back? But I didn't feel, I didn't feel that. Oh. I actually saw the tap tap. Later. I, yeah, later on, and I was actually embarrassed. I was like, whoa, Jay-Z, he tapped nah, him. Yeah. I went backstage and Jay was like, so you ain't, you ain't see that? <laughs> and I was that like, you? what? And he was like, no, nah, you ain't just see what just happened? And I was like, yeah, we killed it. That's what just happened. <laughs> and he was like, no, you ain't see. And I was like, what are you talking about? Right. The whole time, my sister was standing right there. And I'm cool, and I'm cool with her, you know, being excited and all that. I understand that, but, you know, you also have to understand that, you know, people put in work to, you know, to make that performance happen. That took weeks. You know, um, you know the, the, the planning of it. To, if you look at those screens, we had to go to Yankee Stadium. We shot that live. You know, there's right. a lot of planning that went into that performance, you know, the intro. And, you know, to disrupt that is, you Were know, you angry? Were you angry? Yeah, I was a little angry, yeah, to be honest, I, which, you know, 
what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fight little mama. <laughs> you would look crazy. <laughs> yeah, we would talk through whatever. You would have took what you would have took Kanye's headline right away from him. Yeah. <laughs> have you spoken to them since? No. I haven't. No. Have you no. tried? Yes. I would love to speak to Jay Z one on one. What would you say? And um just to pretty much know how he felt, but um but my family was telling me that they heard an interview on the radio from Jay-Z and um, he said, what was he supposed to do, beat up little mama? <laughs> and so I was like, wow, that, that meant that he didn't, he didn't really like it. He was, um, he thought that he put so much hard work into his performance and finances behind his performance that um, at that time coming up unannounced was just like, he, he didn't really feel yeah. that. And um, I just, I would definitely apologize because that wasn't my intent. Yeah. Never to be disrespectful to anyone. I've always been a respectful young woman. What about to Alicia? Definitely. Did you definitely. did you try to reach out to her too? Definitely. Yeah. Try definitely. Uh, you could tell her that I apologize, and I definitely um, plan to work with both of them in the future. And I hope that this didn't, um, you know, rock these. Oh. Yeah. Just crazy. All right, now, little mom, just real quick. She just said she got overwhelmed. She was so into the music, and I could sort of feel it because I felt that it was really pumping people up. And suddenly, I and a lot like, had gone on that yeah. night anyway. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but we can appreciate her being overwhelmed, and inspired, but we would have preferred she did it from her seat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Jay-Z wasn't feeling that. Jay-Z feels like I disrespected him as opposed to praising him, respecting him, honoring him, sharing that moment with him. I don't, I don't know. I, I would never get up there and try to disrespect Jay-Z or take a moment from life that someone else has created and try to relive it. I'm too original for that, and I respect him too much for that. You know? All Little Mama wanted to do was celebrate New York. But in what world is jumping on stage uninvited okay? Well, in Little Mama's mind, it made perfect sense, and it was her way of showing homage. This was apparently something that she would do back then. And I'm gonna bring this up because I haven't ever seen any other YouTuber bring it up, but this was not the first time that Little Mama emerged on stage unannounced. As approximately four years prior to this performance, rapper The Game was performing his new disc record called 300 Bars and Running at a local concert in Brooklyn when a young little mama, then 15 years of age and going by the stage name M.A., would make her way to the stage. Everyone on that stage was initially confused but kept it cool and rocked with it. And I'm guessing little mama felt that things would be the same this time around. But oh no, they were far from it. Twitter was the newest social media platform at the time and it gave people a chance to voice their opinions on little mama's actions. She was ridiculed, mocked, and cyberbullied for years following this incident. Neither Jay-Z nor Alicia Keys accepted her apology, nor would they come to her defense. And she was blackballed from many sectors in the industry, as there was an underlying clause put in place that if you worked with Little Mama, there was a likelihood that Jay-Z wouldn't want to work with you. At least that was what Little Mama was told when she was denied many opportunities moving forward. During her debut, Little Mama had beef with a few young female MCs, like Miss Nana, who was endorsed by Wendy Williams. Don't nobody call me garbage and get away with it. I'm about to go in on you. Maybe because my mixtape's selling better than your career. <laughs> Ha 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 ha, they can't beat her, they can't stop her Even try to black ballin', but I got that crack Product for the streets, to the suburbs too Sisters, brothers, cousins too I'm Lil Red Rhyming Hood, and you're just old mother goose Your blows a nursery, so I'ma be the first to be Exposing, taking pictures, this year, I'm the rap TNC Little Mama would go toe-to-toe -to -toe in several diss records And went back and forth with another rapper named Young B She was the girl that did the song Chicken Noodle Soup with the soda on the side the little teenage disc records them girls would do back and forth was great practice, almost like sparring. But Little Mama would rise above the local talent and cement herself, gaining much respect from her peers when she dropped a five minute freestyle to Lil Wayne's hit song, A Millie, delivering her verses with no curses. And it went viral. Several artists in the industry did remixes, but hers quickly became the most popular. She performed her version on 106 in Park. And when Lil Wayne performed the song at Powerhouse 08, he brought Lil Mama onto the stage to perform her verse. This event included a slew of artists from Ice Cube to Chris Brown to Will I Am to The Game. She was with the big leagues. In her rap, she mentioned being Lil Wayne's right hand woman at the fictional Carter Factory, where they eat rappers alive, and she truly saw herself coming up in the ranks with him. 
But by late 2009, and after the VMA fiasco, Little Mama's music career was at a standstill, and a new fierce female rapper named Nicki Minaj was making her way to the forefront and would soon become the female face of Young Money, Wayne's label. And right out the gate, many people, myself included, felt that Nicki took shots at Little Mama on one of her very first appearances, which was on the remix to Yo Gotti's Five Star Chick. Now, Nicki would later say that Little Mama is a term of endearment and that she wasn't actually referring to the rapper herself in the song. However, during Nicki's first years on the scene, she developed a habit of throwing shots and then saying, nah, it ain't about so-and-so. People are assuming, even though you say it's not specifically about her, that Roman revenge is... Roman's revenge? Roman's revenge is for um, You know, you gotta be careful when you pick fights. And that's what I've learned in this business. You just never know. So many listeners felt if she wasn't talking about Little Mama, then who was she talking about? Little Mama was then encouraged by people close to her to jump on the five-star beat and give her own freestyle in a response. And it's unclear if she was unprepared or caught off guard, but this is what she brought. Yaka, uh, just keep letting that South beat rock. Uh, just keep letting that South beat rock. Uh, just keep letting that South beat rock. Uh, I take it back like a beat box. Uh, when I hop up in the ring, I hop up in the ring with a brand new ring. I get so crazy when I spit up on these rhymes, man. I get so crazy and I do it all the time, man. It's off the dome, man. It's off my mind, man. Say what you talking about? That girl be lying, man. Lying, man. Ah, man. Nah, man. I'm playing, man. You don't see how I be doing these things like I'm Lil Man, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you heard another classic freestyle on the round table, Little Mama. Don't you ever in your life try to freestyle again. Next time, write the dang on song, then rap it, all right? Don't freestyle again, especially with your friend, and that's going on YouTube. That's messed up. That is a disgrace. Don't do that again in your life. Goodbye. Little Mama by now was no longer being taken seriously as a lyricist and even as an entertainer. Meanwhile, Nicki continued to thrive in her music. The two would meet face to face when Nicki appeared as a guest on Little Mama's show, America's Best Dance Crew, and everyone went wild when they saw the superstar Nicki appear. Following this, Nicki began sporting a bob, and because Little Mama was wearing a bob when they met, she felt that Nicki mimicked her style. She told Vibe Magazine, I know what I do and I know what I possess and I know who I am. I'm a trendsetter. The greatest form of flattery is imitation, so I'm flattered. She also went on to say that female rap veterans Missy Elliott and Lil' Kim felt challenged by her presence and named Jada Pinkett Smith and MC Light as her only true advisors. Of course her comments were met with heat from social media, many of whom felt she was delusional and wasn't even considered part of the rap conversation to begin with. But Little Mama stuck to her guns as she knew her worth, regardless of whether or not it was acknowledged. But as the years pressed on, she did appear to be somewhat resentful of Nicki's continuous winning streak, saying in 2013 that while she saw Nicki winning awards and accolades, she rarely saw her embracing other women in hip hop. In 2015, she took shots at Nicki on the song Too Fly, rapping, If I was born in Trini and moved to the States with the rage I make, I would have got deported. As far as taking shots, I mean, this is hip hop, it's, it's, it's fair game, you know? Um, if they took it as a shot, then it's a shot. Uh, because perception is reality. And you know, at the end of the day, I'm not here to say no, I didn't. It is what it is. It, you know, if they look at it as, oh, she took a shot at Nikki, there it is. It's a sport. So for me, it's not a personal thing. So whether it's um, her or him, it's like anybody could get it. It's fair game. Ultimately, her gripe with Nikki is mostly one-sided. It's easy to see that Little Mama felt slighted with the platform Nikki was given and wished that she herself was given the same opportunities and that she'd likely do things much different if so. Also, Nikki was overly sexualized throughout her career, something Little Mama didn't advocate for. But even Nikki's haters never could say that Nikki looked bad or was unattractive, whereas Little Mama's looks were constantly ridiculed throughout her career. She was called all sorts of insults in regards to her appearance. And a few years ago, she tried to shoot her shot at rapper Meek Mill, who was an ex-boyfriend of Nicki's, and he quickly shot her down. And of course, the internet went haywire with that.
You ever had a series of unfortunate events, and when you get to the end of it, someone was there to give you a recap, but almost as if they were throwing it in your face? Well, in the summer of 2011, Little Mama would be given the ultimate slice of humble pie for the whole world to witness when she stopped by a new radio show called The Breakfast Club, where radio host Charlemagne, acting on behalf of the haters on social media, spent the entire interview dogging Little Mama out with insult after insult. One of my nicknames for you is the voice of the young struggle face. What? They tell me I'm, they tell me I'm sexy. I've never heard that. I'm, now everybody you probably never heard that because you you look old. Uh-huh. Alicia Keys and Jay Z. That's, That's when right. I realized that you were delusional as hell. Because what made you feel like you could get up and go on stage with Alicia Keys and Jay Z? If he was like, who's this young man trying to get on stage? Uh-huh. That me. The rumor's sad. true about a uh, Keisha Cole shooting a biopic and you're gonna play a young Frankie. I'm Thank very you. proud of you. Thank you. You know that. You know. And if your face was the Bible, it would be the Old Testament. You play too much. Was, we about to put a sock in his mouth. Listen you here, chill much. out, Jurassic Park, Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex prehistoric yeah, face. Yeah, you gotta come off as cocky. I come off as confident. I believe in God. I'm a high believer in God. And I know who I am. And I'm not going to come up to a radio station or anywhere else and let anybody strip me of my pride. I know who I am. You yeah. haven't put out no music in a long time. People know you for playing yourself, walking up on stage with Jay-Z and Alicia Keys. Charlamagne, seriously. From. That's the truth. Out. Cut this out. Could y'all please help me Can out? Can he cut this out? Nah, nah, I know what you're what saying. What do people know her for lately? On stage with Ignorant. Alicia Keys and Jay-Z. Where the song at? But what, how many people just called up and said something about Alicia Keys and Jay-Z? How many people called and said that? That's a Name good one. That's true. <laughs> That's a good point. At one point, the emotions that had been brewing since her mother's death had finally caught up to her, and she would end up breaking down live on the air. I put out an album while my mother was dying <laughs> of cancer. That right there alone is a struggle. That's hard. That's tough for anybody. But my music will speak for itself. My actions will speak for itself. My mother will be proud. My father will be proud. At the end of the day. And nobody can stop me. Period. This interview was among the first Breakfast Club interviews to go viral. But if you think social media would defend Little Mama, think again. They took the most painful part of this interview where she was crying and turned it into a meme. And once again, everyone had a belly laugh at Little Mama's expense. Over the years, Charlemagne would catch heat from some folks in the industry regarding his comments towards several people, including Little Mama. I wouldn't sit in and have a conversation with a sucker. Yeah, you'll sit here and you'll bash the, a little girl, little mama, till she cried. That's what you do. Coward. Oh, nigga. Yeah. I think you're a bitch. You let Federal Star and them check you, but you made that little girl cry. They make her cry, but that's it's you all dead. Good. That's you dead. Envy, I want to talk about some music. Little Mama has since been back to the Breakfast Club twice, and while Charlemagne has never shown any remorse for making her cry, he did offer sympathy regarding her mother's passing. I'm gonna put a little bit of um, my concentration and focus on helping to uplift a sister who is talented, smart, witty and just had her chances cut too short and that's little mama because she is a talented young lady so i i, I want to see her do some beautiful things and i don't know that I, I if i'm supposed to say but i will she just got the role of left eye in tlc's new movie so i am so excited for her little mama did have her moments of triumph though in 2013 it was announced that she'd be portraying left eye another misunderstood gem in the music industry, in the TLC biopic. And of course, social media was outraged by this decision. In fact, myself and maybe two other YouTubers were the only ones to come to her defense at that time. She had already appeared on Left Eye's posthumous album, I Legacy, and did a venture with Left Eye's protégés, Black, for a TV show that never got picked up. T-Boz and Chili would also defend Little Mama ahead of the film's release amidst all of the negative press. But when the movie, which also starred Kiki Palmer and Drew Sidora, dropped on VH1, it became the highest rated original film that the network had ever seen. And everyone praised Little Mama's portrayal of Left Eye as she nailed her down to a T. It literally revived Little Mama's career. And for the film and its soundtrack's promo tour, TLC would take Little Mama on the road with them, doing many performances with Little Mama covering Left Eye's raps. She even recorded ad libs for No Scrubs around this time. But the group's biggest performance was at the 2013 AMAs, where they would be performing their biggest hit, Waterfalls. However, it was apparent that Little Mama was ill-prepared for the rap.
the feedback the entire performance received was quite negative, with some publications calling it the worst performance of the night. TLC weren't necessarily happy with Little Mama's performance either. Yes. So when Little Mama, <laughs> we did American Music she Awards, rap and dance we had to time. hold her down and almost beat her up back. She's like, girl, you missed the whole like line. Like, what do you? And she's like, I was out of breath. Yeah. And we kept telling her in rehearsals. So she can't keep up with the pace. In rehearsals, it's like, you know, you got to go full out all the time so that you know. And lesson learned, though. Yeah. And I just got to say, and this is just my personal opinion, I got to say it's real rich hearing the girls complain about Little Mama's vocal performance when they are notorious for lip syncing. Okay, I'm a huge TLC fan. I've met the girls. I was a member of the TLC Army for many years. But even I got to keep it real with the girls. At approximately 99.99999% of their award show performances, Left Eye was the only one with a live mic, and while the other two typically sang to pre-recorded tracks, they even performed Waterfalls at the Grammys in 1996 with no mics. That's how brazen they were with it. And sure, they tried to say, oh, the headset didn't work, stop the cap. Y'all wasn't going to sing whether it was on your head or not. And at the AMAs in 2013, of course, Little Mama was the only one with a live mic. T-Boz's vocals were pre-recorded, and Chili's vocals were non-existent. And so for them to be upset at Little Mama was a bit hypocritical. And with all the hate that Little Mama had already been receiving, they had been her saving grace up to that point. So I kind of wish that Chili hadn't said that, and to Wendy Williams of all people. Critique in private, yes, but don't condemn in public. Now Little Mama has had quite the tumultuous relationship with the trans community stemming from 2009 when she was a judge on America's Best Dance Crew. Now, Little Mama had been quite the controversial piece on the show, with many people not liking her observations, nor feeling like she was established enough to make such observations. One of the dance crews, Vogue Evolution, were all LGBTQ members and had a popular trans dancer on their team named Laomi. And when mid-season stressors started to get the best of some of the members, Laomi stormed out of rehearsals due to the pressure, but made it back in time for the performance and killed it with her crew. However, when it came time for Little Mama to deliver her verdict, her statement was delivered in poor taste. And way too fast, and next time you try to pull a stunt like that, just try to hold it, bang, so people can get it and then move on. Laomi, your behavior, come on, it's unacceptable. I just feel that you always have to remember your truth. You were born a man and you are becoming a woman. If you're gonna become a woman, act like a lady. Don't be a bird, like, oh my God, I'm not doing this. You know what I'm saying? It, it gets too crazy and it gets confusing. You're doing this for America. Even though you're the face for transgenders, you're the face for America right now with this group and it's not about anybody else, it's about y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, do it for the team. Do it for the team. This started a firestorm of controversy. Even though Little Mama's words weren't said with malicious intent, Many people within the trans community felt it was extremely insensitive and unnecessary and sought to have Little Mama removed from the show. She would issue a formalized apology, stating, I would like to clarify anything that was misunderstood from Sunday's show. My remarks were never meant to be disrespectful regarding Laomi's gender nor offensive to the LGBT community, which has been a community that has supported me in all my endeavors. However, in hindsight, I recognize that my words may have come across as hurtful. I spoke with her privately after the taping to express that it was not my intent to offend her or any member of the transgender community and that I still live for Vogue Evolution. Donna runs into a tranny and she says, hi, my name is Amanda. And he starts to date her and then later on he finds out that she's a tranny. He can't get mad, right? Because she did say she was a man. Duh. Well, well. So if I was dating this guy, right, and I told him my name was Lil Mama, but I took him home to meet my mother, yes. and she called me yes. Lil Bow Wow. Shouldn't he be mad? Bruh. I mean, I thought he could tell, or at least knew. In 2021, Lil Mama went on a rant, stating that if children are too young to smoke, drink, drive cars, and go to the club, then they are too young to be having gender reassignment surgeries, and that the government's push of such surgeries is a form of depopulation. Her comments were immediately met with backlash, but she would double down on her statement in an Instagram Live. It's basically depopulation. So if you have 
little girls that like little girls, then you won't have children. If you have little boys that like little boys, then you won't have children. If you have little boys that think they're girls more so, and we believe in that notion without them even going through puberty or giving them an opportunity to figure out who they truly are, we'll have more confusion and less babies. That was my point. Now, when it comes to people who choose to be gay or choose to be lesbian or choose to change their sexuality with the mind frame of an adult and you're able to do that on your own, I don't have anything against you. I have gay family members. I have lesbian family members as well as friends. And I don't judge grown people who make grown choices. But when we're talking about these babies, we have to be very mindful about what they're being fed. Because if my niece comes to me and she say, Auntie, I want to be a boy. And I'm like, God, right, Chinky. Oh, because I was watching a show with Saw Saw, and boys are very strong. They know how to shoot basketballs. They win when it comes to, like, tussling and little fights. And I'm like, well, it does, you don't have to be a boy for that. And I can explain these right. things to her that she may be confused about. But if she's telling me, I think that I am a boy, and she still feels that after she goes through puberty, I'm not going to label her insane. I'm going to listen to her, take heed, and support her. But we're talking about making children feel like they can make a choice of changing their genitals before they even go through puberty. You don't even know who you are or what you like. As she continued to face immense backlash for her comments, she then posted a statement that she should start a heterosexual rights movement to advocate against the bullying that heterosexuals receive from the LGBTQ community anytime there's a difference of opinion. And many social media users felt like because Little Mama wasn't a parent, or a member of the LGBTQ community that she had no place to speak on these issues and must have been harboring transphobia in her heart. And she's just such an easy read. But here we go. Lil Mama, this is why people don't like you, okay? Honestly and truthfully, you know your career has been popping since your lip gloss has been popping. You consistently either put your foot or your body in your mouth. You're always at the wrong place at the wrong time. And everything that you are saying is rooted in absolutely nothingness. So what do you do when your talent dries up and the industry no longer is checking for you? You use the last little piece of fame that you got and a couple of Instagram followers that you got to say the most absolute controversial thing to get back in front of people how about you go make some music veteran rapper in the business and she didn't know who I was but I speak to everybody no 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 I can't I had a hat on she wasn't supposed to I had a hat okay. on so, okay and so I saw her and I was I was like oh my god and I said hi how are you young lady and she said hey how are you and later on we ran into each other she's like Oh my God. I had no idea. And it was Lil Mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Mama's biggest enemy is probably the media itself. In their eyes, she can't do anything right. And they're always quick to post an embarrassing story or something controversial, such as her ticket that she received for going 38 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone. I mean, really? Or anything comical surrounding her music. When she dropped the viral dance song Sausage in 2015, she got her fanfare from other female artists like Solange, MC Light, Missy Elliott, and Azealia Banks. But the media wanted to focus on the creator of the Sausage movement, Matt Bellamy, who Little Mama shouted out and gave credit to but didn't include in the video. He stated that he wanted her to get him a bus ticket from Florida to New York to film with her, but that a lack of funds prevented it from happening. But after seeing the video, seeing the costume, seeing the set, and seeing the car, he felt some type of way. When asked about it, Little Mama denied these accusations. Yeah, Matt. He said that he was the one that invented the whole sausage movement. Yeah, that's what he said. And apparently you guys were supposed to link up and nothing happened and he was kind of upset over that. I did the research to find out where that song came from. And when I found out where it came from, I bigged him up on my site. He bigged my record up on his site. And from there I let him know, yo, if you can make it come through. And he couldn't make it, so that was the end to that story. She then went on to remix Rihanna's hit song, Work. And while her rapping portion was decent, her singing portion didn't mesh well with listeners. You gonna get this work, you gonna get this work. She was once again drugged up and down social media for it. And it's unclear if Rihanna herself ever responded to the mix. But Rihanna did, however, post a drawing of Little Mama's infamous crying meme years later. And of course, Little Mama being the laughing stock of the internet, it got its laughs. But what's crazy about this infraction is that Little Mama can actually sing. Uh -huh. They can say what? 
At the end of the day, while it's clear to see that much of the drama that Little Mama endured was as a result of her own actions, she was given harsh sentences for it, and when it rained, it poured, whereas so many other people in the media do far worse and get away unscathed. But Little Mama was... I don't want to use the word naive, but I will say that in most situations, she hoped that people would understand her. You know, that the world would get where she was coming from and know that she always meant well. But they didn't. Yeah, they, they didn't jump on the wave, they didn't pick up what she was putting down, none of that. And they often went out of their way to ensure she had a bad day, no matter what was going on. But at the end of the day, little mama knows now that these were the cards she was dealt. And in having a better understanding of how the world reacts to everything that she does, she moves accordingly. When yeah. little mama do anything, you, I'm going to get a reaction. I'm going to get a reaction. I'm electric. I'm going to get a reaction out of you. So whether you hate me or love me, you're going to do something. You won't work around here. <laughs> Heard up. In 2023, both Jay-Z and Alicia Keys would officially accept Little Mama's apology. And while she would embrace them, you could tell that it came 14 years too late, and that she would have appreciated them showing a little more grace when she was a teenager and letting her know, hey, I wasn't happy with what you did, but I forgive you. Just that little bit of grace could have done a whole lot for her. Um, I felt like it was so much time in between then and now and although like you know it hasn't been spoken on in a negative aspect or a positive aspect it kind of just left room for people to be disrespectful and I do feel like um, that's something that that um, that they both did catch wind of at some point mm -hmm. so for it to take so long it was kind of just like but it's but it's still like you know it's the thought that counts right. and it's about growth and understanding that god has a plan for me yes. and there's things that i have to do for my life that doesn't involve either one of them all in all i'm proud of little mama for rolling with the punches and allowing herself to grow through it dealing with these trials on a macro level in front of the entire world is enough to make anyone bitter or insane yet she keeps a level head and remains 100 percent her authentic unapologetic self for a full documentary on Little Mama's career and accomplishments, check out Impressive's unsung documentary on her. It's the best piece ever written on Little Mama, and even earned Little Mama's stamp of approval. But I want to close this video out with a clip from Chris Brown's Black Christmas Extravaganza, when Little Mama was on stage with her younger brother, Arnstar, and when the crowd got disrespectful and went low, she went high. This is Justified by Jury. Y'all know how to hit that like, and y'all know how to hit that subscribe. If you want to, do so. And I will catch y'all in the next video.